Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we're continuing, as we will for, for much of the time coming up, th- um, right where we dropped off last week. And last week we were in Luke's Gospel, and Jesus closed out the chapter by saying that he must keep moving and keep preaching to all. Today, again, Jesus starts off preaching, but the crowd is, well, crowding him. So Jesus employs the boat of some local fishermen, Simon Peter's crew. The boat goes out into the lake, and suddenly the people don't really have any choice but to calm down, stop jostling, and listen to him. Now, To review briefly, in all the cases that we've had so far, it's really only come after preaching that Jesus casts out demons or heals. In fact, when the preaching is rejected in his hometown, no miracles follow. Jesus uses miracles, we've said, to demonstrate that the the good news is real. It's, It's a tangible, dynamic thing. Plus, it shows, it demonstrates that God has come to heal and restore. It's a teaser, an appetizer of what God's plan of salvation is like. However, Jesus has not come to simply clean things up a little bit. There's a a fundamental problem, a a foundational issue that is really the ultimate cause of all the heartaches and brokenness of the world. And Jesus has come to address this core problem. The core of the problem is broken relationships and ruptured connections. The solution is to repair the rift between God and man, to restore trust, we could say, which will then filter down into all the rest of our relationships once our our relationship with our Lord has been restored. And we can see that this is Jesus' goal in, in the way that he goes about his business. I mean, think about who does he talk to and what is it that he does? He's clearly not aiming at the influential or well-placed. He simply sets about wherever he happens to be, restoring the relationships of individuals. In fact, the only time Jesus ever interacts with the true bigwigs like Herod, Pilate, or the other Herod or the chief priests, Usually, they are trying to kill him. You see, Jesus seeks to inspire faith, to to repair trust, to restore trust, not to create a a giant building or a treasury, a giant treasury or giant military. His main goal is not big crowds or grand and obvious victories. Rather, he's constantly talking about encouraging faith and trust in Yahweh. He doesn't go to arenas or amphitheaters. Instead, in our gospel lesson for today, he sits on a boat in a lake. Jesus doesn't seek out kings, but rather fishermen, the sick, and those oppressed by evil. And speaking of fishermen, after Jesus is done preaching, he tells the fishermen to cast down their nets. Now, they'd been out fishing all night, Peter says, and not caught a fish-licking thing. Maybe some of you experienced, if you tried shoveling uh, any of the the snow or ice, maybe you experienced a little bit of uh, how frustrating it can be, this working and not accomplish 